LCR meters are a powerful tool that can help you take your product development to the next level. These essential instruments allow for measuring your circuit's inductance, capacitance and resistance with precision and speed. But that's not all. You'll find uses for an LCR meter across all stages of product development, from prototyping and testing to mass production and quality control. In this video, you'll learn how to use an LCR meter, get expert tips and tricks, and see real-world demonstrations that will deepen your understanding of these powerful instruments. Imagine being able to evaluate and validate components with precision, ensuring that your circuit is optimized to the fullest. Let's dive in to discover the benefits of LCR meters in your product development cycle. Hi, I'm Mark Harris, one of Altium's team of industry expert consultants. So <laughs> what is an LCR meter? LCR meters not only measure the fundamental properties of inductance, capacitance, and resistance, but also provide additional measurement capabilities such as phase angle, dissipation factor, reactance, and conductance. The measurement of these component properties is vital in characterizing their impedance, precision, and performance. You might wonder why you can't just use your digital multimeter for this task. LCR meters differ from digital multimeters in that they are specifically designed to measure these properties and provide more accurate and precise measurements, particularly at higher frequencies. By measuring the component at the frequency it will be utilized in your circuit, you can optimize your schematic based on its actual performance. LCR meters come in different form factors and have a wide range of price points. Handheld LCR meters are portable, compact, and typically low cost. However, their measurement accuracy may be lower than benchtop LCR meters, and they may only offer a limited range of fixed test frequencies. Benchtop LCR meters, like my Rodian Swartz LCX200 here, have higher precision and more measurement capabilities than handheld meters. They're also more likely to offer a higher maximum test frequency. My Rodian Swartz LCX200 is a very high-performance benchtop LCR meter with some extreme measurement accuracy and the ability to dial in any test frequency within its range. If you're choosing an LCR meter, it's essential to consider the specific needs of your application. For example, a handheld unit might be fine if you need basic component testing or verification. However, a benchtop unit might be more appropriate if you're building components or trying to optimize every part of your circuit. Let's fire up the LCX and test some components. If you measure the current draw of a circuit with a current shunt, you might be surprised at how much impact the resistor type has. For example, this through hole 3 watt 50 milliohm current shunt would be fantastic. It allows lots of airflow, so it won't overheat. The question is will it give us the measurements we expect? At low frequencies, the impedance is the same as the resistance. However, if we were to use this on a higher frequency circuit, the impedance starts to change dramatically. By 200 kilohertz, our impedance is now 10% over the resistance value. When we hit 1 megahertz, the impedance is more than double the resistance. This is all due to the resistor's inductance. If we add some current bias to the measurement, even with just 200 milliamps of current, the impedance is three times the resistance. This will present some real challenges if you're trying to measure current draw at anything more than 100 kilohertz. You can forget about using it for current measurements at one megahertz. 
As a comparison, let's take a quick look at a Reden 10 ohm current sense resistor. At low frequency, it measures 10 ohms impedance. At 1 megahertz, 11 ohms impedance. Since the 10 ohm resistor has much higher resistance than the 50 milliohm, you could just put it down to the resistor value. So here's a 150 milliohm surface mount current sense resistor. As you can see, this Yu-Gi-Oh! -Yu current sense resistor is rock solid, all the way to one megahertz. I have these in 150 milliohm one watt resistors because three of these in parallel equals one 50 milliohm three watt resistor, just like we looked at before. The difference is these current sense resistors are usable at higher frequencies. This information is not in the data sheets of any of these products. So I need an LCR meter to know the severe impact one option has over the other. Next, let's compare three 47 microfarad 25 volt capacitors, an aluminium electrolytic, an aluminium polymer capacitor, both from Firth, and a Kemet tantalum capacitor. At 120 hertz, a typical frequency for North American AC to DC rectification, the electrolytic cap has high series resistance and lower than rated capacitance. The aluminium polymer capacitor looks much better. Changing the frequency to 100 kilohertz, the polymer cap looks good on capacitance and the series resistance is hundreds of times lower than the electrolytic. At 200 kilohertz, we're starting to see some crazy readings from the polymer capacitor. The electrolytic is only about a fifth of its nominal capacitance, but it's still going strong. It doesn't have much capacitance, but it is still operating as a capacitor at least. On the other hand, the tantalum capacitor starts out strong for capacitance though it has a similar ESR to the aluminium electrolytic. While the capacitance does drop off dramatically, it's holding out much better than the other capacitors until just past 800 kilohertz, where it starts to get challenging for the LCR meter to figure out. What about ceramic capacitors? I'm going to be cheeky here and ask you to subscribe and watch out for my next video on capacitors. I have so many capacitors from all the major manufacturers with the same value and voltage rating. So rather than test them one after another, I'm going to plot their performance. Then we can take a deep dive into capacitor performance, giving you the data you need to choose which types of capacitor best suit your applications. Without looking at some components designed to be inductors rather than just pretending to be them, it wouldn't be a complete video on LCR meters. I have an inductor assortment kit that has absolutely no markings. I don't know the values or tolerance of these parts and I'd like to find out. The small, shiny black inductors measure around 97 to 99 microhenries. So to get an idea of the tolerance, I'm going to use the bidding function on the LCX200 to sort them. The closest EIA standard value is 100 microhenries. So I'll set the bins to go from 0.1% up to 20%. They have all landed in the 5% tolerance range bin. <laughs> well, other than those which looked the same, but were from the adjacent compartment in the box. As with the capacitors, I have a massive range of inductors that I'm testing for a video on inductor types and real world performance, comparing them in a way the data sheets do not. So if watching out for a deep dive on capacitors doesn't do it for you, consider subscribing for some future inductor content. Tell me what you've learned so far down in the comments. Were the results what you expected? I've learned it's absolutely critical 
to choose a suitable component for your specific application and verify the component will work as you expect. If you're just getting into LCR meters, here's a few tips to get you started. Firstly, give your meter a chance to warm up before running compensation or comparing components. While the meter should handle its own temperature change well, it's best to give it some time to stabilize to ensure you get the highest precision measurements. Fixture compensation is used to correct the parasitic capacitance and inductance introduced by the test fixture itself. This is particularly important when testing high frequency or high impedance components. Test fixture parasitics can significantly affect measurement accuracy. Therefore, ensure you have run compensation for your fixture before taking any measurements. When using an LCR meter, it's also essential to pay attention to the test frequency and the measurement parameter you are using. Different components may have different behavior at different frequencies. So choosing the right frequency for the component you are testing is important. Additionally, different measurement parameters such as impedance, capacitance, and inductance may give different results for the same component. So it's essential to understand which parameter is most appropriate for your application. Use the highest test signal level your LCR meter supports and still give you a good reading. Doing this will give you the best measurement accuracy and resolution. This is especially important when working with high impedance components. For example, my LCX200 supports external current and voltage bias, letting me test components at the voltage and current that they would be used in the circuit. Finally, using good quality fixtures, test leads and cables matters as poor quality leads can introduce noise and measurement errors. I understand that some fixtures can have an eye-watering price, but that's the cost of precision. Additionally, always ensure the test leads are correctly connected and in good condition before taking a measurement. Loose or damaged test leads can lead to inaccurate readings. In conclusion, LCR meters are essential for measuring the electrical properties of components. Using an LCR meter to evaluate components before building a critical circuit around them lets you ensure your board will perform as expected and allows you to optimize for every last bit of performance. I hope this video has given you a better understanding of how LCR meters work and how to use them effectively Remember to comment, and if you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like. Then subscribe to the channel for more informative electronics and circuit design videos. Thanks for watching.